Well, my friends, no millennial has ever been up this early. Never. <laughs> Those dirty people have never been up this early. All right. This is what we're doing. I'm going to grind it for a little bit before Fabi starts. And then when Fabi starts, uh, we're going to go for it. All right. It's not letting me set the position. Hey, yo, yo, chess base or chess.com, buddy, clear board. The annoying thing about this uh, exercise I'm doing is that I got to set up the pieces. That's the annoying part. Uh, and not only do I got to set it up here, but I got to set it up on my own board. So I don't have like the, the ready-made files. And if that was just the glitch in the matrix, then that would be very upsetting indeed. In any case, hey, hey, yay, 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 yay. All right, let's see if I can get this straight, man. We're going to guess Sicilian already by the looks of it. Um, so I have the witty repartee, <laughs> the witty repartee of Janssen and Hort after the, uh, after, you know, I do the analysis, but what I don't have is like the rest of the game. And I really enjoyed that when I was doing the Kramnik files with the same, uh, exercise I'm doing. If you're just joining me, I got it. If you've never seen this before. I got to give an answer at three, six, and nine minutes. It's a great exercise. And uh, this one we're going to do is it's always the person to move at the bottom. So this is going to be black to move. And you got to evaluate it, like who's better and why. And also what should black do? Let's give him a rook. We're going to super duper, super duper double check that I got the right position. Black to move, who's better and why? I'm gonna set it up on my own fancy pants board. Is this a little much? Is this a little much? A little bit. It's a little bit cry. It's a little bit. And I'm gonna do this until the top of the hour, and then we're gonna go look at Fabi. We're gonna go check Fabi out. This is a Sicilian gone wrong for Mr. White. All right, now we're gonna start this baby. Too many things. Too many things. This book is falling apart on me too. Good morning, Jailer. All right, so it is now, we're going to call it 620. All right, Greg, what do we got? So even if we weren't self-respecting people, we could play F6 and claim we're better. But we want more. Knight of six is, of course, the first thing that will jump out into a dude's mind. So knight f6, queen e2, maybe the guy holds it together. So do we have a fancier move? Like f5. All right. 
right? So at three minutes, or around three minutes, almost three minutes, F5 is looking strong because rook F5, G6, rook F8, GH, and I don't see anything for the guy. Also in these positions, I just have a little bit of experience to know that you want to use that F pawn to create mayhem. Dude, what, what else is there to think about after you, after you discover that fight fact? <laughs> what do you need to know after you see F5, boss? If knight F2 fails to Fe, yeah, and maybe queen E2 is the best move. But after queen E2, you could play F4 if you wanted, if you find nothing better. So all right, uh, already at the beginning here, we got a sitch where f5 is looking very strong and I need to double check if there's any resources for white, if I'm missing something. And I need to just open my eyes to see if there's other ideas for black. Maybe white can wait with some, you know, because the weird thing about f5 is catastrophe strikes the guy when he does something. Me playing fe alone might not be the biggest deal. Like, what about f5, knight e3? This is, it looks great though, Fe, Bishop C4, no, we're doing great, we're just doing great. Do I like the perk defense? I think perk defense is amazing. I have a couple students who play the perk defense. Some, some, some get real fancy and they call it the modern, but it, in my mind it's still kind of a perk defense, often transposes to a perk defense. Well, I might call it here. I might call it a little early. I have called it early before and then been wrong about it. <laughs> that's always not the, that's, that's the worst. I have students who do that too. They're like, I, I know, I know the answer for sure, for sure, 100%, 100% boss. And then they don't, then it's not really true.
Yeah, looking good for me, uh, or at least good enough for me. So we're going for F5. I'm about to flip the page and see what they say. I'll read it to you. Black is better. This is just the, the written explanation. I love these written explanations. The exposed position of the white queen allows the interesting attack F5 exclam. The course of the game Castro Hort Tbilisi, 1969, demonstrated that in the Sicilian defense, a counterattack by black on the king side is in itself a significant turnabout. After F5, queen E2, F4, okay, I had F4 too. B3, now here to me where I was done because I've achieved so much strategically. White, but this is just how the game went. B3, Bishop H4, Knight F2, Knight F6. Black had a very strong initiative against the weak pawn on E4 and a generally active position for all his pieces. Yep. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm hoping the next one doesn't have that many pieces because it's these things are hard to set up, man. <laughs> All right, so always the way I'm going to do this is the person on the bottom is going to be who it is to move. So I'm going to admit it. If you find this annoying, that cries like setting up the position manually, you are not alone. You are not alone, my friends. I find it a little annoying myself. But he is close. Give him a pawn cry. And give him a knight. And then he will be complete. All right, so this is gonna be white to move. Let's set this bad boy up. And actually, one of the things I really enjoy about this, these problems is sometimes like that one, they're not that hard. At least for me, it, that felt like, okay, you know, kind of a basic thing. But like in a real game, you don't know. You don't know if it's gonna be hard or not. Some of these problems on the other hand are very difficult. And they're mixed up in terms of Val, you know, difficult, let's say difficulty level. Bishop, Queen. All right, and they always have a little question. But the same was last time. White is winning better equal. Obviously, white is at least equal. And we're going to go right here. One about eight, and we're gonna call this, I'm gonna be generous to myself, call it 631, 369, my friends. 369, what do we got? White is definitely better. Okay, there is a basic problem that he's attacking our rook and our a pawn. And we can't really, without magic, without using magic, we can't defend both. B6 looks very strong. Because, so I'll write this down in my first variation. B6, knight a7, C, excuse me, B, C, and the knight is tagged, and the square C8 is in trouble.
So that looks like a bundle for the guy. B6 is, of course, the move I think we want to do anyway. Oh, it's funny, I, with the computer check, I have checked some uh, positions. So we might do that today, too. Just with the cheapchess.com computer. I've checked with the chess-based computer a, lot of them, a couple of them, too. That one seemed obvious enough to me. I didn't need to check it. Sometimes they're wrong, which is fun. <laughs> Sometimes they're wrong. Or there's... Uh, actually, the, the, the reason I generally check is because I come up with some answer that is different from theirs, and I want to know if I'm completely off base or not. Well, dude, B6 looks gnarly for the guy. Dude, oh man, I'm getting this. This is terrible. I'm sorry, this is DM Hokey's fault. This is DM Hokey's fault over here. Um, B6, Rook D7. That, that's abysmal. I mean, White's already much, much better if that's the best he's got with Rook D7. And then, Worst case scenario, right there, I've got knight c5. All right, so now I need to double check, because now this one seems very easy. And life is generally not that easy. <laughs> my life, my life is generally not that easy. Okay, Craig, you just missed a key variation, thank you for not claiming victory yet. The problem with b6, my friend, is knight c8. A little early in the morning here, boss. Knight c8. All right. Now, that doesn't mean that you are wrong. It just means that that is the thing you must answer. <sighs> I mean, it's just a glorious position. I didn't lose anything after b6. Knight a7, b c, knight c8. I haven't lost anything. I can play rook c1. I can play queen c5. Oh my god. Everything's available to me there. No, I mean, that's just a great position. I bet this was a, it looks like a Dutch gone bad or something. This is terrible. This is absolutely abysmal, man. All right, my friends, I think I'm calling it. I think I'm calling it. So our variation is b6 and, oh gosh, I set up the board wrong on my board. <gasps> I set up the position wrong on my board. I didn't have a knight on f6, my friends. In which case, of course, the position's easy. You jerk. <laughs> you jerk. Wait, there is no knight on f6. There is no knight on f6. Oh, see, this is the problem. This, you guys got hosed. I didn't get hosed. I didn't get hosed. You guys got hosed looking at that with the knight on, on b6. So that was my bad, you guys. I think I had a knight on f6 for you guys. There was no knight on f6. All right, so I'm claiming this is easy times with b6. Let's see. I really blew it there. Here's an old phrase you hear from old-time GMs. This is what they write. If white can't win this position, he can't win any position. They're really cruel. They're really cruel in this book. It's, it's kind of like an old-time cruelty that you don't get anymore. The extra pawn and the weaknesses in black camp are ample proof that white is winning. But what's the best move? Most forceful is b6. 
which decides the game almost at once. Moreover, the soft or sensitive re reader, ooh, the soft or sensitive reader who retreated the rook should deduct points. Why play chess if you're going to worry about your opponent? <laughs> In the game, Hort Modic, black played rook c6, but you might as well not, you might as well stop after bishop takes c6, right? Okay, beautiful. Again, mucho apologies that I set that thing up wrong for you guys. Mucho problems. Yeah, the old time cruelty, man. You don't get that anymore. The millennials, dude, if you did some old time cruelty, they would get on you. They would get on you, man. They would be cruel to you and they wouldn't even understand it as cruelty. They would just call it their job or something like that, you know? <laughs> like, you can't do that. And you'd be like, no, I'm just doing some cool old time cruelty. And they're like, no, <laughs> no old time cruelty for you. <laughs> None of that for you, buddy. All right, so give him a pawn. I keep, I, um, look, it's, it's a little early in the morning. It's a little early in the morning, crime. And once, once I start talking smack about millennials, you know, I just get a little too excited. All right, Craig, can you get this together? Can you pull it together, man? Top of the hour, we're gonna go check out Fabi. After he blew it yesterday. Blew it, dude. Okay, this is gonna be white to move. I'm gonna super triple double check and the, there, sometimes this be, begins with a question, so I'm just going to tell you their question. Uh, can white take the pawn on d6? So sometimes you, it's not just like a, a question of who's better and why, what should they do? It is a question of, hey, can you do something? So here we go. Can white take the pawn on d6? That one was easy enough to set up. All right, so this is problem 109. We are at 640. Yeah, 640. Okay, can we take on d6? And uh, the obvious question is, what about that bishop e5 at the end of it all, right? All right, queen d6. Queen takes, rook takes, bishop e5. That's got to be the first question. At that point, though, I can play knight d5. Now, maybe we're not done, though. So knight d5, if bishop takes on d6, then knight f6, king moves, knight takes e8. But we might not, that might not be the end of the variation. So we gotta be a little careful. This is great practice for me. This is the kind of stuff where I often don't trust myself in a real game. All right, so here's our variation. Queen d6, queen d6, rook d6. Um, I see nothing else for the guy besides bishop e5. 
anything else and I think I'm just cruising. So bishop e5, knight d5. At which point I'm threatening both to move the rook on d6 and knight f6 check anyway. So, bishop takes d6, knight f6, let's try king g8, knight d6, and the question mark for us here is, are we certain we're getting our knight out? I think we are. I think we are certain we're getting our knight out. All right, again, so the question is, can we take the pawn with impunity? Queen d6, queen d6, rook d6, bishop e5. Is there some variation I'm missing here? Knight d5, bishop takes rook on d6, knight f6, king goes to like g8, knight takes e8, and if, say, bishop e5, I've got bishop takes c5, after which I'm going to get out for sure, for sure. And then bishop e7, I've got knight c7. Arguably also just, uh, no, no, knight c7, and yeah, I'm getting out for sure as well. All right, Craig, you missing anything? We're at the three minute mark, and so I'm at queen d6, past the three minute mark. I'm at queen d6 is the correct move. Or rather, the answer to the question is yes, Cry. You can take on d6. Um, I think king g8 would be legal. And so the variation that we're talking about is queen d6, queen d6, rook d6, bishop e5, knight d5, bishop takes rook on d6, knight f6. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. What am I saying? First time chat, Nadia. Of course you're right. It's an early morning. You're absolutely right. What am I saying? And I, and I chastised Nadia. I was like, Nadia, you don't understand. King g8 is legal. No, king g8 is illegal, which makes, the, which makes the problem even clearer for white. Now, maybe I feel like this is a little too easy, so I'm worried I'm missing something. Some little dirty trick that maybe they can do. Looks good to me, man. Is there some dirty trick I think I can do? About to call this thing. I'm about to call it. Too too easy. Kind of weird. No, a lot of these problems have been very difficult. This one feels too easy for that to be so simple. All right, Tiny Turtle says, "Go for it." Let's see what they say. Probably something cruel like. If you took the pawn on d6, you're not a real chess player. I love these guys. Okay. Black left the d-pawn without defense, but in Polagievsky Jansa, 
queen takes d6 decided the game. Just as white's hand reached for the pawn, black realized to his horror that he'd made an oversight. The pawn can be taken because of our variation. And then after knight f6, they kind of stop it. They're not even going to talk about whether king g8 is an illegal move or not. <laughs> it is better, as the ancients knew, to see one move further than your opponent sees. If you did not take the pawn, you get no points. No points for you. All right, let's do one more, and then we're going to go check out Fabi. This is going to be black to move. All right, what are we doing here? Boom. God, I can't. It's, it's hard for me. It's hard for me. Well, I'm I'm slow today setting this bad boy up. I'll tell you. Cry, dude. This is taking too long, man. And I got the, the the death happening to me. I'm just over it now. I'm not even that upset about it anymore when the death happens. Because DM Hokey screwed me over. It's all his fault. What are you going to do? You know, you just got to let it go. It's like the song says, let it go, let it go, let it go. All right, I believe this is our position. I need to double check this. When I'm looking at this page, it's, it's, it's you know, with reverse, it's a little bit reverso on me. All right. Thank you, Rook on G1. All the details are important. So, I believe this is our business. And the question is, black should, you, you get, this is not just black to move, but this is, should I play queen h5? Or do, should I play queen <laughs> b5? Good thing I put a pawn on a6 there, buddy. So those are our two choices. Queen h5 and queen b5. And I'm going to just set it up for myself. And after this, we're going to go do five. Me setting it up as an exercise in can pride remember where the pieces were. From our first setup. I gotta say, it's a pretty nasty position for black. This is gonna be problem 110, 3, 6, 9, and we're gonna call it at 651. And after this, we're going to Fabi. It's equal pawns, but that pawn on d6 looks cruel, man. Cruel. All right, queen b5 or queen h5. They both look miserable. Uh, queen b5, I definitely don't see us living through that endgame. I gotta be clear with that one. Right? That just looks abysmal. And queen h5, maybe.
All right, the good news for black in both variations is that we have bishop d5 at some point to block the, the d pawn. And our g6 knight is stopping any knight e5. Now, that doesn't mean we're living through this. It just means... It just means we have a little glimmer of hope. Okay, this is this is difficult. This is difficult, my friends. All right, we're about two minutes in, and I think this is going to be the first problem I have some difficulty with today. Queen h5, rook g5, the knight hangs on f3, tiny turtle. If we get the knight on f3, we might not die a miserable death. In all these positions, the only reason I might, might, might survive, emphasis on might there, is because the knight is funky. Loose, not funky. Not necessarily funky, he's loose. He's loose as a goose on the loose. All right, I'm gonna write down a variation. So queen b5, queen takes, a takes, knight d4. I might take this back, rook a5. Looks like maybe I am actually surviving that thing. Because on d7, I can play rook e a8. And then you gotta play like king c1. And then I can play bishop d5. That's an inconclusive variation, but that is my three minute variation. This one is really, there's gonna be details, my friends. There's gonna be little, little details of, um, of tactics. Hmm. Oh yeah, Sicilian is a hell of a drug, man. It is a hell of a drug. I'm just gonna state the obvious, the opposite color bishops make the situation even crazier. All right, here's a problem maybe with queen b5. Queen takes, pawn takes, d7. Now bishop f3 is maybe as good as it gets, but that's, it's not great. It's not great, the d7. So, so d7, rook e d8. Bishop b6, bishop f3, bishop d8, 
bishop d1, bishop b6, and it looks like it's lost. All right, let's try to review that variation. Queen b5, queen takes, pawn takes, d7. We're going to say bishop f3, pawn takes rook, rook takes rook is winning. Winning for uh, white. So d7, so queen b5, queen takes, pawn takes, d7, rook e d8, bishop b6, bishop f3, bishop d8, bishop d1, Um, d8, bishop d1, rook d, bishop b6, toast, toast, you're not going anywhere, buddy, toast in the roast, so that might be the answer as to why you got to play queen h5, and the good news for queen h5 is maybe there's just simply no easy knockout for white. All right, so we are at seven minutes and I'm looking at queen h5 to see if there's any any nasty girls. Nasty, nasty girls. There's one weird thought I just had. Uh, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I had one vague hope for queen b5. All right, but I did. It's nine minutes, okay? <laughs> it's nine minutes. You got to commit. The, let me just express the weird hope. Maybe he could survive with queen b5. Queen takes. Pawn takes. d7. And then the ultra weird move. Rook e b8 intending bishop d5 and then knight f8 it's very hard to believe but for example no no knight d4 bishop d5 bishop g5 we're cutting the d8 square we cut we cut all right, let's see what the dude says, and then we're going to go check out Fabi. Oh, this time you are right if you think black is worse, mainly because the pawn on d6 is a superpower and because white also threatens knight g5 followed by queen h5, which would decide the game immediately. So black considered exchanging queens. In time pressure, he played the seemingly logical queen b5, question mark. And the game continued... With the unambiguous 
queen b5, a d5, knight d4. Okay, so I had bishop, uh, what did I have? I had d7 there. Knight d4, rook a5, knight e6. Also good. If black had more time and had looked at the position more calmly, he would have seen, as most probably you did, that the queen exchange after queen h5 offers more chances. And even though white is still better, he still has a long way to go to win, thanks to black's strong bishop. Now, one cool thing about these problems is um, that if we turn on the computer, the computer might well say that white is still winning after queen h5. But there would, they would still be right, see? They would still be right because queen b5, I think my variation as well, looks totally winning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat now. I'm going to turn on this computer and we're going to see, oh, I got to make it black to move. Oh, it's being really annoying. I see, okay. So, right, it's saying queen b5 is 2.4 for white and queen h5 is 1.37. So almost winning, right? Almost winning. I want to check my variation there. Queen b5, queen takes, pawn takes. I'm going to say white to move. And it likes knight d4. What was wrong with my move? Wait, wait, what was wrong with my beautiful move? Uh, rook e d8. Oh, I, I did something wrong here. Bishop b6. Bishop f3, bishop d8. Uh, rook d8. What happened there, Cry? Oh, I blew it, man. Oh, I like total brain fart there, man. Give me a break. Total brain fart. Okay, so I was right, but I was wrong. <laughs> Uh, okay, I was right, but I was wrong. All right, my friends, let's move on to the, the main event. Let's do the main event. And we're going to go chess.com events. And then I got to, I, I got to say, actually, one thing about the, these events is you got to kind of, like here, I'm looking at the FIDE World Cup. Here we go. This thing just started. And I'm going to have to change scenes, I think. And Fabi got... Fabi is playing Ivan Sadic. One thing I'm confused about... Now, I'm going to switch scenes here. I believe... I believe... Do you believe... It's not that one. It's not that one. Oof. What did I... Oh, I might have to do some jadubing. My friends, I might have to do some jadubes. All right. Uh, I feel like I had it yesterday. Now, we don't want this. This is too intense, obviously. There we go. There we go. It's all set up. It's all set up. All right. So, I did this thing. Let's let's make some things bigger here. No, not that much bigger. So there's the times, and there's Sadic and Fabi. This is an old time Sicilian variation. And uh, let's give a little text here. I don't know what happened. I must have. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. Pop. See, there's DM Hokey's. Um, there's his, he turns me into a NASCAR driver every every morning. It's a little bit funky, even for for DM Hokey there. So <laughs> let's. Uh, I got I got so many problems. Let me tell you. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make a jadu for for DM Hokey, for all his NASCAR driving stickers. We're gonna put me in this little. I'm gonna put myself in a box for you, DM Hokey. <laughs> and 
I am going to change the title. I'm going to change this title here. And we're going to say Edit Stream Info. And we're going to say Fabi Watch. Just Fabi. Dune. All right. There are, in fact, loads of other games to watch. And they, I'm sure they are all interesting. But I am not that dude. I'm just interested in getting inside Fabi's head and to see how Fabi plays against the chumps of the world. The guys like Sadic, I've heard of this guy. I've seen some of his games, but he's not top 10. So this is his moment to shine. And also to just see what the difference is between Fabi and this level of guy. Did Fabi blow it yesterday? Yes, he did. All right, so this is not the position I'd want to play Fabi in. Um, this, this one's interesting, I think, because it kind of has its own rules. Like, Yes, it started off as a Sicilian, but it really is its own junk now. You know? It is its own junk. Now, dude thought for a minute and a half on Bishop B7, which is maybe a little odd. Um, because we're in kind of theoretical mode here. Good morning, sombrero. So here we go. I might uh, open El Chess Base here just to see what theory is these days in this kind of position. My, my, I don't know if you guys were following the Fabi game from yesterday, but my instinct was that when I left the game, it was right as I left the game that he, he had won the two pawns, and I, and I didn't leave because... Uh, it was over, though it kind of felt over. I left because I had a lesson. But still, you know, it seemed very... Um, it, it was like definitely winning, but I, it was like a moment where I was like, oh, Fabi still has to prove it. He still has to prove it. And amazingly, he did not. <laughs> amazingly, he did not prove it. <laughs> Okay, so actually I'll start here. I just, I'm just looking at my little reference database in this position. Loads of games have been played here. 94, the main move on move 8. And then we're going to see, I think I'm going to guess black has several moves here. It looks, the position looks nasty. And okay, bishop b7 is not the most common. Black's tried everything here. f5. Queen c7, queen a5, bishop b7, bishop a6. The whole nine, everything's been tried. So, I was going to turn on the computer for a second. And for this, you know, I never use the computer, but for the openings, I, I feel like I'm allowed to. So I am turning on a little chess-based computer here just to see what it thinks. Yeah, okay, and it says white's just slightly better after 94, but bishop b7 is not in its list of moves. And it thinks white is significantly better now for Fabi after either c4 or bishop e2. There's been 115 games with, with bishop e2, 90-some c4, and then, and then it drops off. You can play bishop b3 or whatever. So this position looks nasty, my friends, for black. It is moderating a little bit, though. It's moderating. It's saying uh, bishop b2, c5, and c4 knight b4, and maybe, maybe not like a crushing advantage for white or anything. Okay, so now I definitely want to look at it just through Fabi's eyes, because maybe he, with this move, bishop b7, and he played bishop b3. 
Interesting. Which was the third choice move? Um, and not what the computer wanted. And I think I understand why. Uh, and it's because black can play knight b4 and try to steal your bishop. All right, but now I'm not going to look at the computer. <laughs> now I, I feel a little bad even that I did look because bishop d3 might be the move that if you don't really remember, uh, say, bishop b7, you're just going to be like, well, bishop d3 has to be the move. But if you think about it, the black's problem piece, like his wiggly piece, whatever you want to call it, is the knight on d5. And if he can play knight b4 with juice, i.e. with an attack, then he's solving a lot of his problems, I think. Okay. There's so many 2600s out there, and you just don't even really know their names, man. It's so hard. It's so hardcore. <laughs> I mean, I do know their names, but they don't get to play. You know, they don't get to play in these tournaments. Sometimes they get to play for, like, their national teams and stuff. Now, I do think that the good news for Fabi is even if this is some kind of inaccuracy, um, it still will be a complicated position, you know? And I'm going to guess, like, after knight b4, let's say you just castle and give him the bishop. You, the, It's the kind of position the computer won't like for white because of black's two bishops, but that we can enjoy, nevertheless, as little humans. Maybe another way black could think about it too is play queen c7 first to try to induce f4 and then play knight b4. That might be better. Bishop b7, kind of clever to play a move that's lesser known in this position. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, Fabi is the opening genius, but he can't. He can't know everything. He can't know everything, man. No way. Come on. However, our good friend Mr. Sarge, he's the one thinking now after Bishop d3. And Fabi tanked. Let's see here on Bishop d3. He did think for five and a half minutes. Bishop d3. One thing I'm confused about, too, is why is Fabi on board one? Why is Fabi on board one? That's confusing to me. Because there are people on board two. Oh, I know why. Because Saric has two points, so he's paired up. And, but the really Predka and Feruja should be board one because they're the they they both have two points. All right, all right. I'm just gonna look briefly. This is what we got over here, my friends. Predka, Alexander Predka, from Rusland. Okay, back to Fabi. Don't do it. Don't leave it. Okay, just for a second. This known position with Levon and Demchenko. Uh -huh. Jeffrey Zhang. I, I'm on a mild Jeffrey Zhang watch. Mm. Jeffrey Zhang has got some weird moves he likes to throw out there. All right, back to Fabi. This is BS cry. Don't mess around.
All right, so Fabi has assumed the time advantage. Queen C7. Queen C7, Fabi. What are you going to do after Queen C7? I'm assuming you got to play F4. And then Knight B4. And then honestly, it, it don't look good. It don't look good. So for example, Queen C7, F4, Knight B4. If Bishop B2, I calmly play C5. And if you castle, I say, I can say, give me that thing now, or I can play C5 first, because there's no rush. Oh, isn't that unpleasant? Wait, isn't that unpleasant for a, a, a peasant? That looks unpleasant for a peasant. Well, that looks just like better for black. Or at least fine. Maybe something gross like Mag G5. Take this thing. And why not push? You don't have to push, but why not? Mm -hmm. Now it's still messy, but that's the com I, I I do believe in this bishop, man. I do believe in the bishop. All right, so dude is tanking here. Bishop d3. I think we're going to go ahead and say is not the objectively best move because the knight on d5 is the problem piece for black and he gets to fix that problem piece with knight b4 ideas now. Hmm. That's right, Sages. It does look evil. Sages, I got a question for you, buddy. Are you thinking about going to the Rilton Cup in Stockholm after Christmas? Christmas slash New Year's. Are you thinking about that mega tournament, boss? I got invited, and I would have to make a call soon, man, but it's, oh, I got a lot of question marks there, man. It'd be a super long plane ride. I'd have to negotiate it with all my other obligations. It'd be great, though, man. It would be freaking awesome. It'd be nine rounds in the coldest of cold Stockholm winter. Yeah, St. Chess, I got the same problem. Um, I have really left to go, man. That's a dream. Now, maybe, maybe Fabi could play Queen H5 after Queen C7. That would... If I could do it, it would be what I would like to do, just so that I could keep my bishop on c1 open on the diagonal. Another dark thought, you know, a very dark thought is that maybe um, Fabi knew about this bishop d3 idea. <laughs> Maybe he knew about it. Maybe I should give him some credit and he'd say he knew about it. All right, so his opponent tanked and played the move that we expected, queen c7. And now Fabi's thinking a little bit. Um, 
The default move is going to be f4, but my desire would be queen h5 to not block the diagonal. And also just, I don't want to put the pawn on f4 because later this diagonal is going to open up for Mr. Bishop over here, as we saw in that practice variation. We have Ike on Zay. Man, there's all these great tournaments to play in. Yep. Well, Fabi, we got to say that Queen C7, he was thinking about, well, he was thinking that was going to be the move he was thinking about. Even even Jesse saw that. So, boss, <laughs> don't you got a move lined up? Are we double-checking Queen H5? All right, I'm going to put Queen H5 on the board because that's what I want Fabi to be able to do. And it's true. We need to make sure that he can actually do it. So the first claim would be that g6 is doesn't look right because you're weakening all the dark squares. And here I could play either queen g3 or knight f6. What you're also doing with queen h5 is you're saying you're committing to us taking back that way. Um, excuse me, that way, right? Yeah. Now I wish they would keep the camera more on Fabi. I think Fabi's going through a hard time, honestly. The, uh, or let's just say a slightly difficult time. You know, Kazim Zhanov left his, left him. Other guys in the world, man, they got problems when their woman leaves them. Fabi has problems when his coach leaves him. Here's a problem I just realized with, potentially with queen h5. Black could play the natural developing move bishop e7 and claim that this is a threat. Gotta say though, I'm not super sure. Maybe, because maybe we just gambit the pawn. Let him have this thing. And then play a move like uh, bishop d2. Intending C4. C4 and Bishop C3. So that looks kind of scary. But I guess he would have to figure that out. Now, if, he, if this Bishop D3 was in fact some special sauce that Fabi cooked up, then, uh, you know, maybe. Actually, I still have the board open from chess base. So... Bishop d3 was played 18 times. Now, some good players did play bishop d3, but it was only 18 games. And queen c7 played by Vallejo pawns, and everybody played f4 here. Everybody played f4. So, uh, and actually some good players, even though there's not that many games, some good players played this with bad results for white. But, and I'm not gonna use the computer anymore, <laughs> but queen h5, I'm guessing, is what Fabi is considering here. And even if it's not 100% correct, uh, Fabi doesn't care, dude. That's one of the things, one of the reasons I like following the guy. He doesn't care. And by doesn't care, I just mean he uh, he's okay with the madness if things go slightly awry you know or if, especially on the attack like he knows that if his opponent grabs a pawn in a in a crazy position that his opponent's not going to be able to defend like the computer can defend 
Well, that's right, Paul 24. We've seen a lot of your F4 games, buddy. <laughs> no, it's got to be said, man. I don't want to play F4. That position we were just looking at was like F4, Knight B4, followed by C5. It looks very pleasant for um, black. And our bishop is dead on C1, man. However, everybody, every other strong GM did not play, just played F4 and did not play Queen H5. Yeah. So Bishop D, he played it quickly though. He played that Bishop D3 quickly. Uh, he's going to tank for a while. One hilarious thing that I think is very instructive is these dudes will spend so much energy on the opening and then and tank during the opening, spend so much time in the opening. And where the game is invariably decided is later. You know, later, where you're going to need more time. Like Fabi yesterday playing against that kid where he was crushing him. He needed some time, man. <laughs> so, I think, dude, I think he should play Queen H5. I'm assuming you are gambiting a pawn after queen h5, bishop e7, though. Like, because then the only way to defend the pawn is to play f4. Yeah, there might be other things, too. Queen h5 keeps the position free and loose, and f4 is going to turn into a real maneuvering game where black has no reasons to fear anything. After queen h5, the only thing that we have to fear is we lose our e-pawn, which, granted, <laughs> granted, I don't want to lose my e-pawn. <laughs> and I guess also, all right, let's put this on the board. So the drawbacks of this move is after queen h5, we have to take back with the C pawn if he goes for knight b4. And after bishop e7, I think we have to gambit the pawn like this. But like I said, this looks scary. Well, it's scary for everybody. For example, bishop d2, intending c4, c5, c4, queen d4. Maybe not so pleasant for a peasant, you know what I'm saying? Well, so maybe this is the position Fabi's looking at. And Partly, maybe you just got to say, hey, I either believe in this intuitively or not. I'm not going to be able to calculate it all out. Because here, like, okay, let's say bishop d2, c5. You could put a rook on e1, too. You could put a rook on d1, for that matter. You could play c4 directly here. No, no, you don't want to play c4 directly here because of knight b4. Yeah. Oh, Fabi, dude. Queen h5 would be playing with fire, dude. Now, this is the thing. If, if you're not looking at queen h5, <laughs> the, well, there's the only reason to be thinking for in this position, right? It's Because if not, if you just want to be a weenie, you're just going to play f4. And, the, and of course, black might be better there too. 
He's at least, I'm going to go ahead and say he's at least comfortable after F4. He's at least comfortable. Yeah, Paul, E4. You can't be so op pessimistic. The optimist is definitely playing queen h5, the like free flowing tactical e4 player. All right, thinking chess is, I got a suggestion. Queen h5, bishop e7, castles, g6. Now, the reason I play queen h6 is I do want to prevent him from castling. So if queen f3, queen e5, I'm just concerned that the guy's going to castle. You know? Castle and no problem. And queen f3, also, I'm setting myself up on this, this diagonal. But yeah, we have something, you know, I don't, even here we have some compensation. Well, Sombrero, that's what Fabi's asking. <laughs> Can he give up the pawn? That's what he's asking. The problem is, White already White is making a concession with F four as well. It's not like just by keeping the pawn that we have escaped our you know danger. So if you're just joining us, the bishop d3 is, there's two main moves in this. I'm not an expert, but I did look in the database. c4 and bishop e2. Uh, and the problem of the black position, the reason peop this variation isn't so hot, so popular, is because the knight on d5 gets popped around a bunch. For example, c4, knight, b4. Ask yourself, where is the thing going to go from there? No one knows. Fabi, though, plays bishop d3. And Sarich correctly, before knight b4, plays queen c7. And this is important because now, if you play knight b4 first, I could always defend with bishop f4. And now he simply wants it all. Here's another question, actually. What am I saying? Maybe Fabi is considering c4? No, I don't like it. I'll say that the reason I don't like c4 is I don't understand what we're doing after bishop b4. Wait a sec, let's just slow it down. Bishop d2. Okay, maybe we can do that. So maybe Fabi is also considering c4. It does not, well, yeah, it does not seem right though, because I go here. And yes, you can play this move. But I got that bad boy. Maybe I'll take first on d3 too. But I got that bad boy. And if, say bishop b1, I got this bad boy. Now is it a little bizarre for me to be talking about bad boys? Maybe, okay, I admit it but I'm just trying to tell you my fears. <laughs> Say chess is saying queen h5. I assume here, this position. That's my intuition too, for at least a dynamic move for Mr. Fobbs. And it's a great example, a great, thing that I'm not turning on the computer because the computer might well just be like, nope. <laughs> it would tell me a clear answer. Whereas here, for, I just want to see it through Fabi's eyes. And there's no super clear answer for black either. Like, because queen h5, black has big questions. Do you want to try to win the pawn with bishop e7? 
and followed by g6, or do you want to play for knight b4? Big question. I don't know the answer. Well, to Fosca, yes, f4 is certainly... that's So, as I said before, f4 is the move that has been played in all of the games in this position. Um, I'm going to go ahead... What To me, though, it's unsatisfying not satisfying because after knight b4 followed by c5 black's game seems great great so um yeah and right one thought that i think sachs spit out there into the he spit into the wind was Knight d6 at some point. And maybe the way it could go would be queen h5, bishop e7, castles. I don't believe in this at all, actually. I, I just want to show the, the idea that flitted through my mind. This is abysmal. This is abysmal. Because the gh even helps uh, black because of the later rook g8. And of course, this bad boy is about to open. I've been saying bad boy a lot. Um, and maybe he's talking about 96 here, but I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take it. Um, Fabi's tanking. Oh, no. Now, this is... I yelled at him yesterday for tanking in positions that he didn't... It seemed like he shouldn't be tanking on. This one, honestly... One of the things about Queen H5 is since there's... Since the worst that's going to happen to you is you're going to get... You're going to lose the pawn with some compensation but not enough and you know you can either try to look at it forever to find out if that's true or you can say to yourself well f4 is also terrible so let's play queen h5 <laughs> and and it's gonna be uh what's more important is gonna be the 10 minutes that you lost Am I helping Fabi? No, I'm not helping him, but... Exactly. Exactly, Vic. If he tanks forever and plays F4, it's going to be just like, boss, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And he did it a couple times in the last two games I've been watching, and I was yelling at him, you know? DeFosk asking me if I'm helping Fabi. No, it's more like I'm yelling at him. <laughs> I'm yelling at him. I got the medallion on, dude. And I'm being like, Fabi, buddy, if you're going to play F4, just do it, dog. Just do it. Don't think forever about it. Another move I want to mention is that after F4, at some point, black is just going to can also play f5 in addition to the c5 knight b4 stuff. I don't want to know what Ben Feigold would do. I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything about it. And f4 queen b6 is what Sombrero is asking. Um, that's probably possible too. I liked I like knight b4 slash c5 better than that. But um maybe queen b6. And the reason, Sombra, I'm not into queen b6 is I think you're gonna need to play black is gonna need to play c5 anyway, which is gonna negate your tempo with uh, queen b6. No, Tafaska, they he doesn't remember this anymore, man. He doesn't remember. And I'm kind of, you know, this, so just to back up, 
in this position in knight e4, bishop b7 is not a common move. It has been played by some strong people, but it's like number four or five on the list of moves. Whereas queen c7, bishop a6, f5, uh, I think queen b6, all those were more common here. So, and bishop d3, it feels wrong, as I said already a couple times, because knight b4 can come smack it, and knight d5 is the problem piece. So, here we are. Fabi is really tanked now. Yeah, really tanked. Right. Exactly, Paul. C5 has to be played. One of the things that I'm trying to get out of this is just to see how Fabi uses his time in a game like this. And my coach is on me for thinking forever. And it, Fabi is not a great example for me right now. Because <laughs> he's thinking forever, man. Uh, and one thing is, when you're out, this, you know, when you spent this much time already by move nine, you're going to be in deep time pressure, buddy, later. And, you know, obviously Fabi's good in time pressure, but he's not, he's not top ten in the world in, in the, the very quick chess, or he's not, you know, he's definitely not number two. In any case, no one's good in time pressure. So, buddy, move it, move it. Tempus fugit. What if c4, queen takes e5 castles? Well, let me just say about c4 is that C4, in this position, would have made sense as one of the two moves. But C4 in the position after uh, Queen C7 doesn't make any sense. Now, maybe you're right, he can play Queen takes E5, but it doesn't make any sense because of that. And uh, Black is getting all his dreams. Because if you play bishop b1 like a freakazoid, I got c5. All right, he finally played. Oh, no, my friends. He finally played. And he tanked forever. And he played f4. Oh, God, no. He sat 25 minutes and played f4. Oh, man, look at that, you guys. Look at that. Is that hilarious or what? 25 minutes. 25 minutes to play the sad and lonely F4. 25 minutes. 25 minutes, my friends. And now I think Black's position is just comfortable after knight B4. Or C5. Both of those moves. Both those moves seem good. I woke up at 6 a.m. to do tactical training, which we did at the beginning of this, this thing. And now I'm doing this. I do have a lesson at 9, so I, I, got a, I got an hour and 15 left. Dang, Fabi. Dude, 25 minutes. My coach would... Dude, so I, let me just tell you. I, I thought for 17 minutes on a move... And my coach, KGB, dude, he called it a blunder. You know, in the same way that you, like, might blunder a pawn or blunder a piece, he called that 17-minute think a blunder. And, you know, he's an angry Russian dude, Soviet. He's an angry Soviet dude. He's not, he's not nice like the millennials are nice. He's going to tell you some stuff, dude. And... This, 25 minutes on F4, he would definitely call this a blunder, dude. Definitely a blunder. Fabi, you're going to need that time, buddy. You're going to need that time. Now, 
Sarich, I think if he's on his game, he would have been thinking like, what exactly am I going to do if Fabi plays F4? All right. So let's ponder this for a second. Um, I'm going to say that I would want him, I would want, I would want myself to play knight b4. c5 might well be possible too. I mean, c5, you're just doing great, dude. Doing great. I think Fabi really mucked this up, dude. All right, I'll tell you what. I am not allowed to look at the computer, but I can look at the games that have been played. So there's been 12 games at a reasonably high level with F4. And I'm going to guess that most of these players after F4 played C5. We're going to see. Oh, I guessed it. C5 and night before. See? I might be old, <laughs> but I still got it. So Vallejo played uh, C5 and Tregubov played night before. Both of them look fine. Look absolutely fine for black. All right, so Sombrero is asking, after night before, what should we do? And let's just say that if you keep the light square bishop, c5 has the advantage, obviously gaining a tempo, but, and of opening the bishop. But also, and this is really important, that if I need to, I have a, a reasonable retreat square after a, an eventual c3. Right? So, should we play bishop b2? Maybe, but gotta say, this is already pleasant for a peasant, for, for black. So, uh, and then also, c5, like for, maybe we play c3, this is just an example. This position's fantastic for black. Fantastic. Uh, default move could be bishop c5. You know? Look at that. We're doing great. We're doing great. <sighs> bishop e7. Also, there's nothing wrong with bishop e7. Okay. So I... So when Fabi thinks for 25 minutes on this move, the interesting thing is he feels deeply unsatisfied with f4. You know? I would too. It just doesn't feel good. Because your block is a loss of tempo, blocking the bishop, and opening up your, your kingside kimono. You know? Paul's asking a question that Sombrero asked earlier about queen b6. Uh, I don't think queen b6 is great because you're going to have to play c5 anyway to open up your, your bishop on b7. And then when you play c5, you've blocked your queen off. Is rook g1 too slow there? Rook g1. Where was rook, where did rook g1 come into play? I didn't understand the rook g1. This is nasty. Now, I don't think it's not, it's not like Fabi's lost or anything. It's just like feels to me like Black's won the, the battle of the opening. He has won the battle of the opening. Now, Sarich, for his part, buddy, you had 25 minutes to think about what you were going to do on the natural F4. So, boss, why aren't you doing it, dude? Huh? Why aren't you doing it? What's going on? Buddy, you had all that time. You had all that time to figure it out. All that time. All that time, buddy. And now, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? Nothing. Sitting on there. Night before played. All right, good. All right, so because I'm a tempo fiend, I would want to play castles. But it, castles is definitely admitting that things have gone bad for us. Now, it can be argued that c5 was the more ambitious move, maybe. But honestly, he could play c5 next move too. So for example, and we had this like an hour ago, we, literally, that we had this position like an hour ago and I was like, c5, that doesn't look pleasant. That just does not look pleasant, my friends. Mm -mm. And I think I even had that position on the board. Yeah. So let's say the disadvantage of knight b4 is I think it is less ambitious than c5 because what knight b4 is going to do is it's going to take time out to go steal the beautiful bishop. Is it a positional achievement? Yes, but it will give white time to set up his junk like this. And I want to stress, I definitely believe in black here, but I don't think white's like facing as much pressure as in just the simple c5, which puts, well, yeah, I, I just, as white, I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. All right, so I'll tell you guys what, I'm gonna go look, this has been played before, Tregubov played knight before, again, I think c5 is better, and uh, white has tried loads of things here. Bishop e, well, it's only f four games. Bishop e2 was tried twice, c4 once, and my move castles once. Let's see. Um, there's one game, Gashimov, Tregubov, that was the two, let's call it, the, it was a rapid game, and white played bishop e2. As you guys might remember, Gashimov was an amazing player who died young. All right, Fabi, how long are you going to take on this one? <laughs> hey, Fabi, you can't think this too much. Uh-huh. Well, thingy chess, that might, that might actually be a real concern. So let's check it out briefly. Um, I think, so thingy chess is saying, could white maybe play c5, c4? Now, I fully believe in black's position here, but if, if, I, if I decided to play knight b4, this might be the kind of thing I'd be worried about. And uh, so imagine knight b4, bishop b1, I want to say I love Black's position. And now this knight, he's a real fiend because he can come in through this way too. And of course the bishop on b1 is not the happiest of souls. I'm going to guess our default move here would be, uh, we want to be a little careful. Yeah, no, it would be castles followed by d6, baby. Followed by d6, and, and if you want to hit me with a3, you're like begging me to go back to c6 and then to d4. And next move, I play d5, man, with big pawn brick and face. <laughs> then next move, man, d5 with big pawn brick in your face. One cool thing about this system for black 
is it's got its own logic. Like it's not, it's not just simply some, you know, Sicilian. It's like, it's a weird position that has its own rules. Okay, so, uh, wait, I'm gonna refresh to make sure I got this. Make sure. So here it goes, night before castles. Did daddy get it right? He did, he did get it right. That bishop e2 move, no, no, man, it takes too much time, too much time. And then c5 was played. Castles was a little bit of a think. C5, a little bit of a think. All right. So uh, this position, my first intuition here was knight g5. When I saw that castles was only played in one game, I was like, oh, cry. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe you don't understand chess. No, I understand chess. Let's see what happened here in this one game where castles was played. This was Garcia Pantoya against Jimenez Fraga, 2009. So C5 was played in that game too. And then Queen E2. All right, so question. What should Fabi do? My first instinct was that Knight G5 was the move. There is a problem with Knight G5 though, is that you are abandoning the D6 square. I still, I still like knight g5. Queen e2, the thing about queen e2 is, you know, dude, I can take on d3 then, and then do you want to take back with the pawn like a nasty girl? You know, is that what you want? So let's go ahead and say that queen e2 is just like the relinquishing of life. <laughs> because then black will have all the fun after simply taking this thing, and then if you take with the queen, which maybe you should, okay, then you've lost a thousand and one tempos. And if you take with nasty pawn, I think black has several good moves. The easiest of which is d5. He could play bishop b7 too, but d5 looks nice. d6 also possible. Okay, let's see what happened. Queen e2 was played. May, now, maybe there's something wrong with knight g5. Hmm. Also, you know, maybe I'm being overly pessimistic about the position for white, but it certainly feels like after queen e2 that black is fantastic. About an hour ago, Paul 1e4 said, hey, uh, look at that light square bishop. Isn't it amazing? And yeah, that's a hell of a drug, man. That's a hell of a drug. All right, so here we go. Fabi's down 20 minutes. He's traumatized from not be beating Nihal yesterday. Oh, man. It's not an easy life. Not an easy life. Yeah, no home cooking, that's right. Now, we got a question about knight g5. I, I assume you're right, ASV. There, there's some problem with knight g5. Um, kicking me, maybe. I'm just going to go back to f3. Now, do we believe in black? Unfortunately, we do. I also believe in black in this position, too, though. All right, so my instinct... Well, actually, so let's say this. Black does have to make a decision here. Let's flip the board and imagine it from dude's perspective. Um, it, 
If you do my solution that I just did, excuse me, with CD and D5, maybe the knight can move. Now, maybe the CD is just the grossest thing ever. So it is like a question how he's going to recapture. But we got to say, dude, if queen takes, C4 looks amazing. Amazing for black. Look at that. Isn't that all of the dreams wrapped up into one pretty little bow? Isn't that what that is? All the dreams? I think that's all the dreams, my friend. Now you could try to bail out into a bad end game. But that's that's a bad end game. That is a bad end game. I think this is like that's a stellar move. Whack! Imprison this bishop. Play bishop e4 later. Play for g5. Rook b8. Oh, man. No puedo. Now, maybe I'm the one who's being pessimistic. I don't know. So, this guy Sarge. Um... He should just take the freaking bishop dog. He needs to do it sooner rather than later. Take the bishop, see which way Fabi is going to recapture. Both of them, both ways are unpleasant. Now maybe Fabi is thinking something like, hey, look. Now if when I recapture with the c-pawn, I'll have a little juice on the c-file. I got to stress, I'm not, believer, I'm not a big believer in that, but... I think that's the way Fabi would recapture anyway, it, just because it gives a more complicated position. And it gives black some choices here too, with bishop e7 or d6 or d5. d6 being the most ambitious of those. Do you hear the clanking? The clanking of the medallion? ASV is talking about the C4 super punch. But I don't see super... Where's, C, where's, the, where's the super punch? Where is the super punch? All right, let's see what Tafaska's saying. So he's saying, boom, boom. Um, boom, 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 boom. White will have no problems. Uh, I, I don't, <laughs> all I know is this bishop is a problem and my king is better. My king is better. So, is it still complicated? Yeah. But there's definitely still problems. There's definitely still problems. Even if I play castles here and you come over here, I, you know, I got it's true. It's true. I got to solve some technical difficulties, right? But definitely believe in this for Mr. Black. Um, one thing I think for, from Black's point of view is on d5, White doesn't have to take. On d6, he might have to take, but he might also not have to take. Like we might have, we might just let him win the pawn and play something like bishop d2. And on d5, we don't have to take either. And we can maybe legitimately claim that our bishop is the bishop is blocked. So like a knight g5, for example. 
and this is at least complicated. So that's one of the reasons I like C takes. Uh, right, because it's just more complicated. It gives Black some more questions to deal with. Good morning, Ren. Yeah, it's early, man. I've been at it already for for two hours. Yeah. Um, ASV, I'm sorry I missed where you meant with C4, but I, I understand. There is going to be a C4 at some point, for sure. All right, this is our position, and dude is tanking. Dude is tanking here, and I think he should just take on D3. Boss, you got to take on D3, man. You got to do it. You got to do it. Um... No, you got you got to take on D three, man. You got to do it. Maybe he's thinking of ASV's C four move here, but I I don't think so, man. No, Daddy doesn't like that. Yeah, Tavaska. I don't know if I'm a a G. I don't know if I'm always thinking GM style, but. The bishop on b7 is the heart of the position. Now, black goes for it big time with queen c6. <laughs> oh! He thinks he's a real champion now. He thinks he's a real champion now. I don't know, buddy. Queen c6. All right, let's say some obvious things. Black is threatening c4. ASV super punch. Donkey punch. He's threatening ASV's donkey punch. Uh, 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 uh. Um, but I don't know about this. All right, let's flip it back now for Fabi's point of view. Now, my sense is this is an opportunity for Fabi more than anything else. Because black is making it complicated in a position where, especially when he decided to play knight b4 instead of c5 first, he was the one who was playing just to grab the bishop. And, all right, let's give his move a, a shot here. Let's give his move a shot. Now, just to update it, I think we're in queen e2 has been played one time, and then what did black play here? So this guy, this 2400, played rook c8 on move 12. And I just want black to play knight takes d3. I just want him to say, dude, just take it. Just take it. So queen c6 is a novelty. Am I allowed to annotate with a novelty? Look at that. Novelty. And uh, let's talk. Let's talk business. <laughs> the bishop on d3 isn't going anywhere, right? That thing will eventually get taken. And we've got to ask, what are our options here? It would seem that we have to move the knight. I guess we could consider rook e1 too. A little bit strange, but we could consider it. Well, Tiny Turtle, that's because it's DM Hokey's fault, dude. He's supposed to fix my shroom problem. I'm seeing a little shrooms, too. Maybe, all right, I don't know if I'm supposed to... There's one setting that we had here. I don't know if I should do it. There's one setting that I could change. I shouldn't change it midstream, right? Oh, the shrooms. Oh, the terrible shrooms. We've been, we, we, me and DM Hokey, we worked on this forever, man. We do not have a solution. And DM Hokey is a genius, dude. 
He's a genius. No, I haven't changed the encoder yet. It won't meet, let me do it midstream either. It doesn't like, it, I, I, I would have to stop the stream and fix the encoder. All right. Oh man, DM Hokey, what have you done to me, buddy? What have you done? So let's say the obvious question is gotta be some night move. And how cool is it? So let's consider knight g5. And let's say bishop e4 is the threat. So now you got to take. I cannot recapture with the queen because of mate. And now black has several moves, but I'm not sure he's done himself a service with allowing that knight to g5. Maybe he has. So let's say bishop e7. Doesn't mean we're gonna take the thing. Just means we're looking at it. <laughs> it just means we're looking at it. Doesn't mean we're gonna take it. Uh, this is fine for black, dude. I mean, it's really fine. Does that mean queen c6 was even the best move? It doesn't necessarily even mean that. Okay, things happened. B3 was played. Fabi says we are not moving the knight, buddy. Okay, B3. Um, and that was, I think, the first move this game that I didn't just automatically predict. Let's go here. Queen E2, Queen C6, B3. So Queen C6 with a novelty. Fabi plays B3. And he's got a simple strategy and I think really this is Tafasco's strategy from earlier on is that we can play against the C pawn and hope for life and Queen C6 might really be giving us a important tempo in that quest also the other thing with D with Queen C6 is if I want to play D6 I'm not going to be threatening D E. So, for example, if Black plays D five, I think we, I think we just know. First of all, D five is impossible now because of Bishop B five. Uh, so there's that issue also with Queen C six. Same thing with D six. So there's no moving of the D pawn. There's no moving of the D pawn. You can take first on D three, and then play D six. But like I'm saying, the I don't have to deal with the d6 pawn because your queen isn't even talking to e5. All right, let's flip this around. No, no, that's, no let's leave it here. I'll flip it around. b3 might have been a good move. Bishop e7 played. Okay, here we go. Isn't black structure better? Well, it's not only the structure, it's the bishop on b7. All right, so B3 gives Fabi some more options about how to put his stuff. Um, and he, he's going to develop his bishop. Now, Tafasca's intuition much earlier, like an hour ago, was, dude, let's play bishop E3, and when he takes on D3, let's pound the C5 pawn. And that might be enough for equality for white. And the queen c6, he might really regret it, dude. It's not clear that that is the greatest thing we've ever seen. But let's say the candidate moves here are moving the bishop to boom, boom, or boom.
And let's say the obvious, we are not allowed to move the bishop on d3 until we move the knight or protect it. So that means that now the knight on b4 gets to hang out forever. Okay, and actually another candidate move. We could play bishop a3. It's a sad, sad move. But maybe we could play that way with the intention that if you take, I'm going to play Tafasca style for rook, one of the rooks to c1 and counterplay. And if you don't take it, and let's say castle, I believe in black. However, uh, we do have a pretty, we have a little attacking structure going on here. Where I, yeah, if I was black here, I wouldn't be 100% confident. It's because white has so many different ways of building the position. Rook a e1, f5, rook f3. All these moves are possible for Duke. So, all right, I am leaning toward the ugly looking bishop a3. That's where I'm leaning. I think queen c6 might have been a, a little bit of an inaccuracy. Quite possibly, this dude, Sarge, underestimated b3 in the way I did. <laughs> That's right, Tafas, you're, you're a famous dude. Yeah, bishop a3 puts unpleasant questions to the c pawn if you take the bishop. And if you don't take the bishop, I'm just like so happy that I get the little attacking structure. MD Knight, thank you. Thank you. We need some we need some love here at the dojo, man. We definitely need some love at the dojo. Because we need to like hire some people to fix my my acid trip. Because DM Hokey can't figure it out. It's not fair to DM Hokey. We do have a, a secondary solution. We've got a secondary solution we're working on. All right, Fabi, what's it going to be, boss? Mm. Knight D2 to C4. I got to admit, I wasn't thinking about it. The, the thing I don't like about it is I don't see why the knight on C4 is better than the knight on E4. And we, the knight on e4 is at least plugging that terrible, terrible long diagonal that black has on us. I think you should play bishop a3. It's a little bit... Yeah, I think it's fine. I, I think, like, we're not worse anymore after bishop a3. Yeah. The acid trip is a feature, that's right. <laughs> okay, wait, there's some weird stuff I just realized we had to think about. Bishop a3, could black play c4? Pawn cakes. Acid trip incoming. No, we could play pawn takes. We're okay. We're alive in 1985. Let's slow it down here for a second. 93. Bishop e7. Queen e4. Queen e4, bishop e4, takes, takes, rook d1, and black is better here, for sure. And he has got a choice between bishop takes c4 
or king takes e7. King takes e7 is just a simple way for him to be much better. You can also play rook b8 there. Okay. So, there is something to calculate here for Fabi. Namely, does bishop a3 right here fall into grief after c4? If bishop b4, we play cd, intermezzo. So, that means this is the only move. And we got to say, even if knight d3 doesn't work, some nasty move like queen a6 might hurt us. Knight d3, bishop e7. It's got to be said, maybe even knight f4 is a thought. But the, the worst news for Fabi is we're just suffering in this position, right? This is El Sufferero. Now, Fabi might tell himself, hey, I'm maybe not that bad here. And maybe he isn't, okay? Maybe he isn't, but it's suffering. Well, maybe, it's, maybe it's not so much suffering. But anyways, there's a lot of other options there. That This was just, if Black didn't want to think about anything, he could land in this position. So I think ASV was talking about the C4 donkey punch <laughs> earlier on, and there it is, buddy. There it is. Did I get some shrooms going on again? It's, it's amazing with the shrooms. All right, let's refresh this position. Yeah, dude's tanking on bishop a3. And that c4 move makes bishop a3 a hell of a lot more complicated, right? And, you know, part of it is just how, how bad do you think the position is as white? If you see that variation, you're not going to play bishop a3 unless you're like, dude, I'm in big trouble and I got to go down this path to try to save myself. Or do you say to yourself, nah, it's not that bad anyway. I can play bishop e3 and just kind of build my stuff. Problem with bishop e3 is like, black plays castles. And then what? What do we do? You know? Not so easy. We could beg him to take on d3 with a move like a3. But I don't, I don't like to beg. I don't. No one likes to beg. Yeah. Okay. It's a difficult moment. One of the things with like Fabi missing the win yesterday is he just, uh, you know, you don't, sometimes this is going to happen to you, you know? And at least at the moment, it, it's looking like we're playing for a draw. And I was critical of queen c6. I wasn't certain. Like I thought knight d3 was just an advantage for black, but this, why not, man? This is also, I mean, as long as bishop, some move like bishop a3 doesn't knock us out. And you could play bishop d2, also intending castles bishop b4. But here you have less of Tafaska's trick, right? Tafaska wanted to play against c5. And the bishop on d2 is not hitting c5. Well, I don't know if I don't know if it's a joke on <laughs> money four, but sometimes our openings go wrong, man. Sometimes they go wrong. Oh, I gotta get ready for this lesson pretty soon. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have the hour lesson. I might come back after. I might come back after.
All right, boss. All right, he moved, he moved. F5. Oh, dog. Oh, dog. Now, why? Now, here's an example. Now, now here's actually, this is me and where me and Paul 184 can commune for a second. I was so pessimistic about the white position that I was just like not even thinking of the ambitious F5. Holy bajolies. But does it make sense? And maybe one reason I, w I wasn't taking into account either was like before when the queen was on C7 where maybe she should have stayed, F5 wasn't really possible because the E5 was hanging. Now, oh, wow, F5. Well, come on, cry, get it together. Of course you should have at least seen it as a candidate move. It's way better than that pathetic Bishop A3 stuff you were peddling. Oh, F5, boss, for sure. It's not even a question. Even if you lose the pawn on E5, at least you developed your bishop on C1 now. At least you developed your rook on F1. You're developing two pieces in one go. Absolutely. Well, here we go. How great is that? How great is that? Take that, Sarge. You blew it, buddy. You allowed F5. Now you're gonna pay. You know what? You're gonna pay. You're gonna pay, buddy. You are gonna have to pay. That's right, ASV. Oh, no. Oh, no. Give it to me. Should black castle long? Well, let's just say this. Let's flip the board. Try to see it from dude's point of view. Castling long? Good. Definitely a thought. Let me show you my first. Okay, no, definitely thought. Um, one, let's try it out. Here's a crazy variation that just flashed through my head. Bishop G5. F6. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Knight takes. Pawn takes. Rook G8. Knight takes. Rook takes. Now, to Fosca. We were talking about that, that light square bishop earlier. This is the fears. <laughs> this is the sum of all those fears. <laughs> nah, maybe. Maybe you can get away with h4 and live. Maybe. It doesn't look plausible. Okay? But there it is. All right. What happened? Something happened. He took on d3, finally. <laughs> and let's say the obvious. If you cast along now, Tafasca's play against the C-pawn is going to be a thing. Tafasca keeps getting credit for this. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know about, unless, we'll see what his idea is, but at the moment, I don't understand knight takes d3 fully. Maybe what we could do, okay, here's a thought. Okay, I was thinking about this, intending Rook f5, queen e6, maybe. However, before you consider that, you have to consider knight d6. 
and just ask the question, is he touching my coconuts, you know? Now maybe he's not touching my coconuts. Certainly looks like he's touching our coconuts though. Yeah, he's touching my coconuts, you know? If there's no mate, that's, we're in trouble. And then Tafasca's gonna come hit on C5. Hey now, Sarich, buddy, I got some advice for you. Don't take on D3 unless you're sure what you're gonna do next. Because <laughs> he, he tanked on night, he tanked, he tanked up for four minutes. On night takes D3. Yeah, don't do it unless you're sure, buddy, about what's happening next, because wouldn't it be sad if you were thinking it was gonna go EF, Rook F5, Queen E6, and you miss Knight D6? Oh, buddy. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to speak with you again. All of a sudden, it's looking not so pleasant for a peasant. Now, conceivably, I should cheat at the end of these games and like look at what the computer said about a lot of the stuff that was going through my head. But at the moment, I just want to say Queen C6 looks like a culprit. And B3 was a nice move. Bishop E7, and then all of a sudden F5 is playable, and it's like, wait, what's going on? The rook, all of white's pieces besides the rook on A1 are now developed. Like the, the, the uh, deficiencies of F4 have all been rectified. They've been rectified. Uh, as we, yeah, we, I've been, you know, I've d d done a bunch of stuff with St. Louis and recently I haven't been able to go just because I got family stuff and yada, yada. Um, Kosti has been going in our place. He's been fulfilling the role of the dojo person over there in St. Louis. But I'll, hopefully I'll go back sometime. My, my, my real hope is to qualify for the U.S. seniors myself next year and play rather than being a, com a sad, sad commentator. Speak, Fluffy. Thank you for following. Now, there was a once, back in ICC days, there was a Fluffy who was, I am David Vig Vigorito. Is that the same Fluffy? I don't know. Maybe it is. Well, boss, dude, you, you, why'd you play 93 if you weren't sure what's happening next? You knew he's gonna play C takes. You gotta think about it before you do it. Hey, boss. Did you miss, did you miss D, or did you miss EF 96? That could be a bummer. That could be a real bummer. Dude, I don't think, I don't think this is so pleasant anymore. Because after Castle's Long, Tafasca's Bishop A3 or Bishop E3 is hitting you right in the face, son. Right in El Face Rooney. You don't want it. You don't want it. I don't know. I think knight takes d3, dude. I don't, I didn't, unless he's, he's gotta have some fancy move right here. Queen d5. Let's try queen d5. Why would you, but if you're gonna do this, you needed to think about it before. <laughs> before you took on d3, buddy. I mean, 
Looking good for Mr. White here. Looking good for Mr. White. And it's just nice for White. Do, do we know exactly what's happening? No, but it just looks nice for him. I think Fabi's turning this around, dude. Or rather, Sarich has turned it around for him. Now, I don't know if that was Vig himself. I don't know if it was Vig himself, you know. Fluffy hasn't reported yet if that was, in fact, the famous Fluffy or a fake Fluffy. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> well, he has the bishop pair, but his king, dude. Where's his king going to go? Donde Adonde with El Kingo. That's the question that the GMs are all asking. Adonde with the Kingo. Oh my God, Yvonne, you can't play knight takes d3 without thinking about it first what you're gonna do next, buddy. You cannot. My only explanation is this is his intention was EF here and then he missed knight d6, after which he's toast. Oh, it is Fluffy. Fluffy, good to see you, man. Good to see you, dude. Me and Fluffy have hang out, hung out a bunch of times, different tournaments. Budapest 2003 before Chess Latte was even born. Chess Latte was born in like 2012, man. Yo, Fobs, uh, you're in control of this game, I think, dude. Are you gonna blow it like yesterday? Like you did with that little punk kid? I hope not, man. Just take the bishop and chill. I guess that's what he did. That's what he did. He's Devon. It's like, dude, I'll just take your bishop now. Chill. And now what are you going to do? You, castles looks deadly. Castles long. Castles short looks ridiculous. Looks like mate in a couple moves. Uh, EF looks death due to knight d6. So boss, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I don't know. I think he blew it, man. I think he blew it. I think he blew it. Speak, Fluffy, speak. I think he blew it. Sometimes I see these guys and I'm like, I could be 2,600. <laughs> How come Cry isn't 2,600? It is true that this guy Saric came out of the opening fine against El Favorino. That much is true. But within a couple moves, he blew it, man. Queen C6 looks like a fail, and Knight D3 looks like a fail. I could be wrong in my narrative of that, but. And he could prove me wrong now. He just needs to find some epic move. I just don't know what it is. I have no idea what the guy should do here. No puedo understand. No Nintendo. No Nintendo what he's supposed to do here. All right, quick look at the Ferrugia game. I have to, I actually have to leave to go to this lesson in a second. Mmm. Complicated. This guy Predka looks like he's fine though. How's Levon looking? Levon looks fine. How's MVL looking? MVL. Looks like he's down a pawn, but he's probably fine. Okay, back to Fabi. Oh, dude, Sarge is tanking. He's realized these crimes. I really think he missed EF96, my friends. I think he missed it. Well, thinking you, Jess, you're absolutely right that you need to consider something like Queen D5 now. That's the sad truth of it. Um, but let's say the obvious. 
if your intention was to play knight d3, cd, queen d5, you would have done it already, right? <laughs> you would have done it already. And we're coming up with queen d5 is just like the least of all the evils on the board, right? And so imagine queen d5, bishop b2. You could take on f5 now, probably. That's not 100%. Because, but you could take it now because here we might live, right? Our queen can now block. But uh, this position, I'm going to go ahead and say that's, that's worse. And your king is still a problem, right? Your king is still a problem. I don't know where he goes. I don't know where your king goes. Uh, and now 96 is a threat. So, but still, queen d5 it still seems like the best you could do. And Sombrero was saying f6 after queen d5. True, but maybe I survive after gf. Maybe I also can play queen e5. It looks scary as I'll get out, but maybe I could play queen e5. Probably not. Probably not. But this one I might live. I'm not, I'm not super convinced actually with f6. Maybe queen d4 too. I don't know. I'm just saying he might he might live through that. But you're right. If queen d5, Fabi will will tank and you know try to find something more special than bishop b2. I'm just saying, at the minimum, bishop b2 after queen d5, and we're doing great. All these other moves though looks like he's host. Yo, Saric, buddy, have you lost your mind? Have you lost your frickin' mind? You're playing the fob. You're gonna get away with the weak sauce, buddy. Oh, man. That's right, thinking chess. I think, I think we're on the same page after f6. He maybe can get some counterplay. Well, right, and I have queen d5, at least you're kind of sort of still in the game. And a lot of times in the Sicilian, that's all you can do. You're just like, what move? What is the only move I can do that keeps me a little bit in this game? Oh, maybe you, maybe you cast a long, dude. That's a sick, ugly move, but maybe you cast a long. Maybe you cast a long. Maybe you cast a long. If we're considering desperation, then we consider desperation. Intention could be bishop a3. This looks really nasty. No, it just looks terrible. For example, here, smackos. I could play bishop, maybe even more concrete, smackos. No, it's a check on c5 cry. It's a check, you can't do it. But all right, there's no need to be fancy. Smackos. Not nice. Not nice. No. That's just not pleasant for a peasant. This guy's tanking. These guys are tankers, man. I'm going to go ahead and say it's been about, I don't know, 15 minutes. All right, I'm going to wait until this guy moves. I need to do a couple things before this lesson starts, but... I'm going to wait until he moves. Think tank. That's right. That's a good one. I like that one. I, I hadn't thought of that one. Think tank. I'm in a think tank. Uh, can I apply to be in your think tank? <laughs> All right. um, big day for the dojo, by the way. We got uh, Sensei at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then we got Dojo Talks after that. So massive, massive streaming day here at the, at the Dojo. And then this weekend is all kinds of tournaments are happening, man. All kinds of stuff is going down. I got some students playing in this uh, 
Dojo Verified Tournament. There's an unverified one too, which confuses me that there's unverified and verified, but we have both. Um, <laughs> so there's that going on too. And there's all kinds of stuff that Bruce is cooking up, man, with, uh, with special sauce tournaments and stuff. I don't even know. Bruce is cooking it up. I don't understand that stuff. But he, I always want to tell you guys he's cooking that up for y'all. Pog Champs weird stuff, you know? Yo, Sarich, buddy. I can't believe you took forever. You took only a little bit on Night Takes D3, knowing that you play C Takes, and now you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm hosed. Oh, I'm hosed. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, buddy. I think you're in trouble. I think you're in trouble on the double. I think you're in trouble on the double. I think you got double trouble here, buddy. Yo, Sarge, dude, you're ruining my stream. <laughs> Let's move it, man. Let's move it, Sarge. I, I gotta see it before I go. You can't just be sitting there on your hands. You're playing the fobs. Oh, he moved. He moved, he played queen d5. All right, so I gotta go, my friends. Let's just say he found eventually the worst of all the situations. And Fabi's going to see if he can find something stronger than Bishop B2. I'm going to go ahead and call it and say that Bishop B2 is a clear advantage for White. But he might have better. He might have better than that. You guys, I would love to hang around. I might be back. If this thing is still going on uh, after an hour, I can come back and see what we're thinking. Okay. Yeah, and Fabi had forever to think about this decision. Now, normally I'd just be like, okay, Fabi, you knew queen d5 was coming because that's the only move left. What do you got planned? But no, Fabi's a tanker. He belongs to the think tank. All right, we got to raid somebody, my friends. I raided Crestbrook the other day, and I'm like, why are we following that guy? That guy is speaking in Russian. We don't do Russian around here. Let's raid chess coach. Andras, the dojo acid stars, the dojo all, uh, the acid all stars. I'm gonna, I have a, we have, by the way, next time we come back, I got a, I got a trick the DM Hokies taught me. We're gonna see if that works. We'll see. All right, everybody, tell Andras hello from the dojo. And uh, hopefully, we're definitely gonna be back this afternoon with Sensei and uh, Dojo Talks. All right, everybody, bye-bye. If you have not subbed us, give us a sub. If you have not followed us, give us a follow. We need it badly. The dojo needs help. As does Sarge. The guy's dying. <laughs>